retired Major Demay McDowell. He tried to save Com Collar, and it's working perfect on little Cookie here. How was the uh, behavior before the safe calm collar, Major? She's pretty wild walking out the door. She always wanted to take off running. She loves the run. How would you describe her uh, energy right now? Oh, nice and calm. H how long did it take, Major? I think it five minutes, ten minutes max. Just walked her up the street and back down. She's fine. When people come over, she goes berserk, and just, I mean, she can do a lot of things. She can run in circles, uh, if you look at the layout in our house, we've got a kind of a great a room and a, and a circular deal. And she'll do that, or she'll come and she'll jump on people, um, just absolutely out of control. She will listen to me, but when she, when, she, when I get her to stop, she's just, she doesn't even know what to do. I can get her to stop, but she's just beside herself, okay. you know, just out of control. <laughs> well, I can confirm everything he just said. Um, I, jumping on people gets me very anxious because I don't want her doing that. So I'm not helping the matter any. I've done the whole bit with returning my back to her, telling everybody else to leave her alone, ignore her. I just resorted to putting her in the laundry room and putting the gate up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Okay, Tyler, come take over. Is it okay to walk on yeah. this? Or? Yeah. How you doing? I'm Dog Whisker, Big Chef McBride. All right, let's see. your dog for me. Come here, Maddie. Go ahead. Maddie. Are you confused there, girl? Come here. Call her again. Maddie. 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 Continue. Maddie. Maddie. Okay, stop. Stop.
Okay, come on over here for a second. I want you to calmly walk right over here to this pillow. Now come right here and I want you to take your dog just like this. Make sure she's still behind you. Give a double correction. Okay, did you see what happened when you gave the double correction that time? That's how smart your dog is. She gets it already. Maddie just wants someone to tell her what to do <laughs> in her language. I want you to give a double leash correction like this. You see what I did? It wasn't a pull. Let's get the action again. It wasn't a pull. It was a quick snap and tension release. In dog language, this means stop. Just like the sound means stop. That's why we use sound with the correction. We use sound with every correction. Why? Because in the future, we won't have to use any other correction other than sound. Okay. Now what I want you to do is I want you to take your hand. In this case, it'll be your left hand. I want you to put it in front of your dog like this, which in its language means to stay. You don't have to say stay. You can if you want. Shoulder straight if you can. You can do it just like this. You can say stay if you want. Stay. Okay, shoulder straight. Drop the lead. Now I want you to face your dog this way. And as you move back, I want you to keep your hand up and go shh. How did that feel? Feels great. Okay. I'm glad nobody else is around. She seems to be. Well, no, she's going to stay right there no if anyone what. else comes around. Really? Yes, because we hadn't talked to her in her language. You see, she didn't understand you. She she doesn't understand human language. Right. Okay. Dog language is very simplistic. It's touch, sound and energy. She will never listen to you unless you're in a calm, firm state of mind. That's why you ask her to sit and she's sitting. Now, so I'm willing to believe you may think if your granddaughter comes out, she may act differently. I'm going to think my grandson will really throw her. <laughs> Alright, so Sue believes that if her grandson comes out, Sue believes if her grandson comes out, that the dog is going to maintain that high energy behavior and begin jumping. Correct? That's what usually happens. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Fritz, can you go grab your grandson and have him stand right where you are? Okay. <clears throat> this is a very simplistic case. This is just communication. Okay. I believe that. You have a dog that really wants to do what you want them to do all the time. We're just talking to them in a different language. <laughs> okay? All the, all the so, anticipative correction versus immediate correction. I'm going to start anticipatively correcting right now with sound. So, so I'm anticipatively correcting. In other words, the object of fixation was your grandson. What's your name? Evan. Hi. Evan. Make sure that this guy's big. I'm supposed to be Big Chuck. <laughs> this guy's big. I'm supposed to be Big Chuck McBride. Do we have a stool or something? Right there? <laughs> What's your name again? Evan. Evan. Yes. So just stand right there. So what do you think now, sir? So far, so good. It looks good. Okay. Can he walk up on you? Sure, he can. Sure. So watch me. What I'm doing now is I'm training Maddie, correct? Mm -hmm. I'm training Maddie how to receive visitors. I'm going to tell Maddie in her language that when you receive visitors, do it in a calm manner. 
And the best way to do that is to use anticipative correction versus immediate correction. In other words, anticipative correction means don't let the energy start. Don't let the bad behavior even take hold. So when Evan begins to walk, I'm going to start correcting. Therefore, the energy in Maddie's mind won't manifest into excited behavior. The first part of this is just whispering. The second part is that you guys are going to do it. This is a very easy case. You have a very good dog. Good. So let's walk. We like her. Just... <laughs> shh, 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 shh. Stop. Now, when, see how Maddie moved up a little bit? Mm -hmm. So this is, a, this is called calm, consistent correction and follow through. We move her back. She cannot move this much from where you have her. To a dog, this much means that they won. To a human, I, I could tell Evan, if you move another step, I'm going to, I don't know if I can do it or not. This guy's six foot four, but I could, hypothetically, <laughs> I could say, if you move another inch, I'm going to knock your block off. And if he moved two inches, I really wouldn't think too much of it. But with the dog, it's different. They can move a centimeter <laughs> and they won because their perception of time and space is different than ours. Movement forward means success. So, Maddie got excited, I corrected, and brought Maddie right back. What I did was exercise, okay? There's Maddie. Watch. We want that behavior, don't we? So let's not get rid of it. Right. So, that's the second time I calm, consistently corrected Maddie for going towards Evan. This is the only way dogs learn. They learn through calm, consistent correction and follow through. What is follow through? Follow through is any time you have to ask a dog more than once to do something. When you have to ask them the second time or more, you enter in what's called follow through. Follow through must be completed to teach the dog. So the process of a dog learning is calm, consistent correction and follow through until you reach the desired result. Step. Dropping the lead is trust. Maddie wants to please, she just doesn't know how. So when do you think Maddie gets affection from Evan? No, I mean in this situation, when can Evan show Maddie affection? Well, I would think now would be good. <laughs> Why? Because she seems calm. Calm. Yeah. You see, we, be, we, <laughs> we give dog affection at the wrong time, most of the time. So when Evan comes through the door, Maddie gets excited. Evan probably says, hi, Maddie. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what is this to a dog? I don't know. Good dog. <laughs> Good dog. Or in their language, it means job well done. Two pats. Oh. Or pats. I go with two pats to, to show job well done. But in any event, when dog jumps and you go, hi, what you're asking the dog in its language is to jump on me. And when you jump on me, I really appreciate that. <laughs> When you touch dog here, or you touch dog on the hind, and you give sound correction, it means I don't approve of what you're doing, your behavior. Because as you come consistently correct and follow through, your dog will, will adhere more. Do we need to keep a lead on her more? Oh yes, for the next two weeks of training, I want you to have the lead on for certain exercises. Okay. Why? Because it gives you a good uh, way to retrieve your dog quickly and it lets you utilize the leash <clears throat> it lets you utilize the leash snap correction which is very integral in the first two weeks 
Eventually, you will only need to use sound correction. Okay. What about your granddaughter? Can we have her come out too? Sure. sure. She went with us initially. You can walk back over here and just stand right by the pole. Right. What? But. As you walk back, look at Maddie and go, shh. It really amazes me <clears throat> that trainers, behavioral specialists, dog know-it-alls, they don't get it. They don't get it. They don't understand that the dog has an instinctive, built-in, universal dog language. It's touch, sound, and energy. The reason we can't get our dogs to do what we want them to do is because we're talking to them in a different language. It's like going to a different country and trying to get something done and you're talking English to someone else who has a different language and they don't understand you. <laughs> it's all language. In every one of my cases, it's language. Uh, did, were you the one that said that the dog, they put the dog on medication? Yes. Your dog doesn't need medication. Is the doctor who gave him medication needs medication. <laughs> oh, I'd like to not have her be on medication. She doesn't have to be on medication. She's going to be just like this. When I leave this home today, your dog is going to be fixed forever because it is a simplistic case. And you're going to become a perfect pack leader today. We tried training when mm -hmm. she was younger. In fact, Michaela went with us. Oh, she, was, she was little. Yeah. She was a few months old. But when we got all done, the next time we went for a visit to the vet, the vet said that the dog was now a teenager, that between 5 and 12 months, they forgot everything that they learned before. <laughs> I was devastated that we spent, you know, what, six weeks or whatever. We they, they, they can oh, never, ever forget <clears throat> their instinct. Trainers talk to a dog as if it was human. It's not. It's canine. They're not like humans. They're like little Borg on Star Trek. <laughs> they all think the same. For the most part. But they all adhere to their language. See, dogs can't understand English. Dogs can't understand English. What they can understand very well is their own language, which is very simple. And energy. The hardest time I have with clients is having them understand that energy is much more powerful than, you know, I'm a Marine, so I'm going to use a, a wild example. Calm energy is much more powerful than an AK-47 or AR-15. If I had 220-pound pit bulls trying to rip me apart, I would choose calm energy as a weapon as opposed to an AK-47 or an AR-15. Why? Because it's more powerful. We calm, consistently correct it, and we follow through three times. We talked about that every time we calm, consistently correct, and follow through, it gets better every time. And it did to the point where she's staying on her own. And she's totally calm now. And she's happy because she's being given direction.